welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at the heresies in the history of the Catholic Church, and today, in the second episode of this series, we'll be looking at the heresies of the first century, claims made about Christianity which needed to be refuted by the early church in order to guide the faithful correctly. Fortunately, one of those is referred to in the Bible itself. And some coming down from Judea taught the brethren that except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Acts 15.1 these earliest heretics have since come to be referred to as the circumcisers. They were people who'd followed the old law of Moses and believed that you couldn't be saved without following that law, specifically that you needed to be circumcised. Well, as you might imagine, a lot of people were upset to hear this and didn't want to be circumcised, and others were just confused, unsure whether their salvation depended on this Jewish ritual or not. The circumcisers had a fight with Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 15, and for a while they followed them around to various cities where they preached to try to undermine their teachings on the faith. However, the matter wasn't really settled until the first council of church leadership. And the apostles and ancients assembled to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter, rising up, said to them, Men, brethren, you know that in former days God made choice among us, that by mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knoweth the hearts, gave testimony, giving unto them the Holy Ghost as well as to us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt you God to put a yoke upon the necks of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe to be saved, in like manner as they also. Acts 15, 6-11 So the matter was settled, and this would be the precedent for centuries after that, that the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, would settle disputes of the faith in this way, showing the right way to believe in Jesus. However, the circumcisers weren't the only heretical group of the first century. In fact, there was another, which was considerably older than even Christianity, the Gnostics. The term Gnostic is based on the word Gnosis, a Greek word meaning knowledge. This is because the Gnostics were people who believed that it is the secret revealed knowledge of God which leads to salvation, not grace. Now, they already had a whole system of belief prior to the dawn of Christianity because Gnosticism was a movement that had gotten its start from old cults and tribal religions. According to the Gnostics, there was an absolute, basically unknowable being called by a number of vague names, who was truly good. And then there was another being called the Demiurge, who was something of a bungler because he created the material world as a sort of prison for the spirit by making matter evil. When these Gnostics came into Christianity, they tried to interpret Christian beliefs in the light of their own pre-existing Gnostic ones. However, this led to several problems. Now, Right away, these Gnostic beliefs are in contradiction with the Christian view that God created the world and said, it is good, in the early chapters of the book of Genesis. However, there's another, more basic problem. Christianity claims that God himself, the ultimate, the being, took on physical form and incarnated as a man. The Gnostics, with their view of matter as evil, could never accept that the perfect being could have a material body. Therefore, they tended to think of Jesus not as being God, but rather as some sort of lesser deity, which they called aeons. These kinds of heresies tend to crop up when you bring a bunch of theological baggage to Christianity, and for this reason, Gnosticism behaved a bit like a parasite, attaching itself to other religious communities and gradually sucking the life out of them. Fortunately, there were also lots of holy people who were determined to put a stop to the lies of Gnosticism, like St. Justin Martyr and St. Irenaeus, and as a result of their efforts and those of many other writers, Gnosticism lost popularity until it had begun to fade by the start of the 4th century. Since then, most unprejudiced scholars have basically abandoned Gnosticism, though, of course, there will always be some outliers with a morbid interest in those old cults. It's unfortunate because some people are led astray by authors who treat cultish beliefs like Gnosticism as more than what they were a false, regressive, unsupportable, and only loosely connected system of looking at the world. 
Next, we'll move into the late 2nd century to talk about the heresy of Montanism. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.